Hello and welcome to another behind the scenes episode where I show you how I make stuff and do random things. So today I'm going to show you how I made the sled. And we're going to start on the lathe again. I'm going to switch over to a four chuck, four, four grip chuck? A, a chuck with four grips, jaws. Four jaw chuck. First try. As you can see in this video, I'm still wearing gloves. As many of you pointed out, you should never ever wear gloves while working on anything that spins because it's gonna chop your fingers off. Unfortunately, I recorded this video before I posted the last video. So just turn a blind eye. I got these aluminum cutoffs from the local scrapyard. I just had to bribe them with some cookies. I squared off the face of it and now I'm gonna drill a hole. This hole is not gonna go all the way through though. So I'm doing a pilot hole and then I'm gonna use a end mill that's plunging capable to uh, make a nice flat end of the drill there. And then I'm just gonna extend that hole so it's the same diameter as the rocket is. So it's gonna be an end stop for the rocket on the sled. It also doubles as a holder for the rocket on the front end. So I only need to make one other holder. Uh, mm, that slid in real nice. Ah, oh, that's what she said. Oh, anyway, so now I'm gonna drill some uh, holes to hold this piece on the sled itself. I'm doing three holes and they're gonna be tapped with M6 screws. So I'm drilling a five millimeter hole and I'm not going all the way down because I'm not gonna use that long of a screw. Uh, it's really straightforward and doing this in aluminium is so easy. Uh, so all we have to do is just drill the pilot hole as usual and switch to the five millimeter and just always use cutting fluid when uh, drilling these things because otherwise aluminium can gunk it up. I have no clue what kind of aluminium this is. There's so many different types and this coming from a scrap yard, like I have, I have absolutely no clue. But it did machine real nice and it did drill super easy. So I really liked it probably good stuff because it comes from a company doing something. Remember to always use tapping fluid. It makes life so much easier. And also when you tap, go forward and then turn back a couple of turns and then start digging down again. Otherwise you're just gonna get stuck. Okay, I'm gonna take another piece here and stick that in the lathe and square off the face. This is gonna be the holder for the rocket at the back. And so we get two points of contact and this block is I mean, these pieces of aluminium are really chunky. Yeah, so they're gonna grab the rocket really nice. But on the other hand, they're gonna be kinda heavy. So eh, everything is a trade-off. So now I'm drilling some holes. This is gonna be all the way straight through. And I just, I'm gonna use the largest drills I have. And then I'm gonna machine out the hole until it's the same diameter as the uh, rocket. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It takes a lot of time um, because I don't have the tools really to do this. I kind of had to fudge it, but yeah, it did work in, out in the end. Um, I didn't have footage of all of this because the camera is shut down for some reason. Anyway, I'm drilling two holes in this piece and they're gonna be straight through. Uh, I'm gonna make this into a kind of clamp, so I'm gonna part it off later. So I'm tapping this side of the piece and I'm doing it now because why not? It's already in the vise. Uh, so I'm gonna cut this using a saw and my saw is terribly bad. I really need to get a proper hacksaw, which I have since. I got it at a really cheap place at the, um, what do you call that, secondhand store? Yeah, whatever. Thrift store, that's the name. Okay, anyway, so now I cut it into two pieces. Now I'm gonna uh, increase the size of the holes on one side so I can get the screws straight through without them being, yeah, too tight, whatever. So now I have a clamp. Look at that, mmm, fancy. Now I'm seeing, seeing some carbon fiber. These are uh, four millimeter sheets and I'm gonna make two copies of this. So I get eight millimeters total of back plate for the rocket knife. I think that's gonna be uh, stiff enough. We'll, we'll see uh, how it survives in the long run. Um, this is uh, done using a CNC 6040, which I bought really cheap from China. And it's, uh, it does its work. It's not super stiff, but um, I didn't expect much for that kind of money I spent on it. Uh, doing designs for this is super simple. You can even draw in any vector program and convert it into G-code. It's really straightforward. 
Oh, look at that. It's time to cut another one. Here's the two pieces ready, and I'm gonna screw everything together. Unfortunately, the battery on the camera died at this point. So unfortunately, no video of this or how I did the skateboard wheels, but that was really simple. I just cut a slot in for skateboard wheels and uh, that's kind of it. Here's the rocket sled all done and I'm currently loading the rocket. So I'm putting on some O-rings, which is just normal O-rings and I'm putting some grease on it. Then uh, I'm gonna load the charge with a uh, primer thingy, a detonator of some sort. This is so the pressure inside of the casing increases very quickly up to the optimal level for the fuel to burn. So you get the most efficient burn and the most power out of the fuel as possible. Now I'm gonna strap the rocket in and as you can see it just slots in the front and then gets tightened down with two nuts. This is so I can very quickly change the charge in the rocket. Oh, look at that. It looks so professional, doesn't it? Shiny. Mm. And you can see the cutouts in the wheels pretty clearly here too. Even though the rail was uh, clearly visible as being done in that shot, I'm gonna show how I did a little bit of it anyways. This process involves a crap ton of measuring and cutting. So I'm using 25 millimeter square tube with a two millimeter uh, wall thickness for um, all the legs and the connector things, the stiffeners and everything. So it's because it's easy just to use one size for everything. The main rail, which the uh, rocket sled actually rides on, is a flat iron that's 100 millimeters wide and five millimeters thick. And this is gonna be suspended by these legs so we get it off the ground a little bit, which makes it easier to film and it also doesn't catch the grass on fire. So now I'm gonna weld a little bit here. Since I own a slow motion camera, I'm gonna show how a MIG welder looks in slow motion. Mmm, beautiful is that. Okay, here it is done. And it's two sections of six meters which screw together to make a 12 meter long rail. What do you think, Hendrik? Uh, it looks nice. Doesn't it? A bit concerned about wobbling, but... Uh, what do you mean wobbling? Show me. <laughs> well, let's say that the tracks ain't exactly 100% straight. That might go a little bit like... Like a fish swimming in the ocean. Oh, nice. You want to try it? Kind of cool. Check this out. It does wobble. It looks kind of steady. It'll look cooler in slow motion. I yeah. can see it all. I bet it will. You want to try it? Yeah, let's go try it. This is Rocket Knife versus Melon in three, two, one. <laughs> 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 